hello guys welcome to my channel so as you have seen the thumbnail you know that we have to discuss about if gsp outdated or not and if it is then what should we do what should we learn right now so uh, before we start this video if you are new to my channel if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please do now let's talk about gsp so spring provides you with a range of options for the view layer so in this video, we will first talk about GSP, which is how you have probably used the view layer in recent years. When I talk about view layer, I mean your UI pages. So in this video, we will see how to interact with them effectively and ineffectively. So afterwards, we will talk about a new initiative called Timeleaf, which you can utilize as an alternative to GSP. So we are not going to talk about Angular and React, which is uh, hyped up right now and you already know about it. But we are going to talk about Timely, which is uh, an alternate towards JSP. So if you take a look here, uh, we have a flow with JSP. So at a client side, what client is going to do is it is going to trigger your application and your application will trigger a JSP page, which is let's say view.jsp. So that GSP page is first going to get compiled using GSP compiler and then it will create a servlet code. That servlet code is going to get compiled again using Java C compiler, which will generate your byte code. And that byte code is going to be your view in a HTML format. So this is your flow when we talk about GSP. Now let's take a look at a sample JSP code as well, so that we can later on compare it with Timeleaf. So if you take a look at this code that we have, so we have imported a tag library, and this is specifically using JSTL. Now, if we talk about pom.xml, we have this JSTL library, which is helping us in compiling JSP. Then we need Tomcat Embed Jasper as well. So this indicates that you expect the JDK or a container to provide the dependency at runtime. So these two dependencies are specifically for your JSP library. Now uh, we have to import this, otherwise we cannot uh, do much in our JSP page. So if you notice here, this is pretty much uh, HTML, but here we are going to provide a list. So this list of names is in a variable and I want to print them out in a list. So here, uh, if you want to iterate over a list, I have to use this C for each, which means that I'm using C as a prefix here to use GSTL code libraries. And then through that I'm calling for each loop. So this for each is a basic iteration tag, which we use with GSPs. So here I created a variable, which is going to hold a particular value from this list and then I'm printing out or listing out that item. Then uh, I have this h2 uh, as a heading and here I'm changing this style uh, with this CSS and then this is just a heading. So this is what we have in GSP. So it looks pretty much understandable but remember this is a sample it is not going to be in your full fledged application. So you can see that uh, it's okay to understand, but it's not very easy to understand because like we have to remember this exact line. Not everyone remembers this, right? And this doesn't come up to you by default. You have to write this down. Then let's say if I want to run this GSP page without actually running this file in my server. So what will I do? So I will go to my project location. I will navigate to the path where my JSP file is. And then I will try to open it using a browser. But what will happen is it won't compile. It will simply print your JSP page. So if you just want to change your color to see how it will look and feel like, then you will not be able to do so until you run this in your server. So even if you are making a small change, you have to run this through your server by committing, putting it into a branch, getting a build, putting that build in your server and then running your application. So it is a very tedious process, but that is what we have to do. Now in the sense that it could have been created in the same manner eight years ago, this code sample that we just saw is not precisely state of the art. So does this mean uh, does this imply that JSP is out of date? 
maybe uh, but let's talk about some pros and cons with JSP so talking about pros it doesn't call for in-depth Java knowledge so as it includes HTML as well so that's why it has the ability to manage exceptions so this is a very pro advantage so its tags are simple to understand and and uh, in like we can use it easily so making it both straightforward to use and learn so we have already seen the tag for each so it's pretty much understandable that uh, we can use for each with c prefix and which is a tag obviously then we can use form as well for your form tags so yeah it is straightforward and it is easier to use it is ideal for both java and non java programmers due to presence of implicit objects which shortens the amounts of code so yeah it's uh, pretty much common uh, if we talk about java and non java programmers so when we create our ui pages it sometimes give you the feel that yeah it looks similar because we are talking about object oriented programming here now talking about cons so first con is your layout so jsp fragments are included thanks to the use of jsp include tag so whenever we want to import something let's say um, I have my menu page already with me which I want to append to my each and every JSP page. So you have 100 JSP page then you have to include your menu page by using this JSP include tag. So naturally having JSP include is beneficial because it saves you from having to copy and paste a lot of code. Though you will find yourself copy pasting those JSP include elements into each of your JSPs if you have hundreds of JSP files so that is a burden so here it would have been much better if all the layout information could be externalized into a separate file so this is what we are missing with JSP so talking about verbosity we already have more than 20 lines of code on our view page we which only shows a list of elements and that we just saw earlier so uh, here we can pretty much guess that how enormous it would be if we had a lot of stuff to display. So just giving you an example, I used C prefix for JSTL core. But let's talk about more tags. If we have to use more tags, then I have to import them. So that will also be added into a new line. So it will add new lines, right? And similarly, there are more stuff in JSP which will add on your lines of code. Now talking about HTML CSS compliance, so our view page is not HTML CSS compliant because uh, let's suppose a web developer has prototyped it and we usually have a UI UX developer in our team. So we would have to rewrite it completely in order to use JSP syntax, which means a ton of rework if we have a lot of JSP pages. So yeah, that is a burden and like we cannot even run it. So that is why also it is not HTML compliant. So talking about additional cons, it is challenging to debug mistakes that happened in your uh, JSP pages since they are the first, since, since they are, uh, since they have to be first completed to servlets and then compiled to your bytecode. JSP pages also takes longer to load the first time because they need to be compiled on the server. It pro produces HTML which is featureless. So yeah, these were the additional cons. Now talking about Timeleaf. So Timeleaf describes itself as a template engine for XML, X, HTML and HTML5. So instead of being based on JSPs, it is based on some simple HTML files and some name space magic. Now let's look at the code of Timeleaf and let's see what we have to do to achieve this. All right, so here if you see, we have the same logic as in we have the same implementation that we have to have a header list of names then we have to print each name and then we have a heading where we want to change the style. So you can compare that it only takes 15 lines and this one takes 20 lines. So uh, then again we have a lot of spaces in between but still uh, you, you can amount it to be lesser than your JSP page. right? Now let's see what it looks like. So it almost looks like your HTML page because it gives you that vibe. So until unless you talk about these things, it almost gives you HTML vibe. Another advantage is if I want to uh, run this 
HTML file and see how it look and feel like. Let's say if I want to see how my blue color is looking like. So I can run this code by going to the uh, uh, by going to the location of where uh, my HTML page is. So I'll just simply run this and here I can see that this is blue. Now let's say if I want to change this from blue to red. So I'll simply update this and refresh my page here. So now I can see that yeah it is working. So here I don't have to uh, like commit to my server uh, Bitbucket server or git server and then uh, get a build deploy that build and then run your application in your server. So it reduces a lot of headache. So which is an advantage. Now talking about pros of Timeleaf, uh, Timeleaf is a robust open source project with regular feature releases, excellent documentation and active user forums. Now if you want your web designer to be able to access your view files, this template engine is perfect for you. The utilized expression language is significantly more potent than JSP expression language and is actually referred to as a standard dialect. Timely functions effectively for rich HTML emails in contrast to JSPs. So yeah, that helps as well. Now talking about cons, uh, we cannot have custom tags and we can have custom tags in our JSP pages. So um, this is not available in Timely yet. Timeless is currently incompatible with JSP tag libraries and if we could have used JSP tag, tag libraries which are really enhanced. Uh, so if that could have been done, it would have been really better. So now let's talk about basic difference. We have seen uh, like technical terms. Now let's talk about basic difference. So JSP is not a template engine. When we run our app, JSP first gets first get compiled to the servlet and then the servlet is getting converted into the web content. On the other hand, Timeleaf is a template engine which takes the HTML file, parses it and then produces web content. Now talking about the flow of your basic Timeleaf page, you can see that we have view, we have data. So here if you see in our view, we have this variable name and in data we have name equals to word. So what I want is I want to display this name variable to the data that we have stored in our name variable. So template engine is going to help us with that combining view and data to a particular HTML data. So here you can see that we have hello world. So this is a basic flow of your template engine. So now let's talk about if JSP is outdated. So in real world scenarios, we are still using JSPs. The JSP files are still in development like we uh, are still developing new JSP pages in our already existing applications. Though if we are talking about new applications which are building from scratch, we are not preferring uh, JSP as much but it is still in use. So it's not outdated and JSP is being internally used by servlet Java e Java EE. So Spring Spring Boot internally uses JSP as well as in servlet. So they use servlet as well. So it's not outdated and it always feels good if you come with a background of JSP because you if you know about JSP, you know about a lot of things that are being internally used in our new frameworks. So it gives you an added advantage and a confidence that you can work easily on time leap. So yeah, it is an easier transition from JSP to Timeleaf, though it might not be true vice versa. So yeah, I would say it is not outdated, but if you are trying to learn something to uh, let's say towards your web development, you can use Timeleaf as a better approach because it's rich, it's easier and yeah, it obviously provides a lot of pros over JSP. So, if you have any other thing that you wanted to point out, you can left that note on the comment section. Everyone else can read that out. And this is it for this video. I really hope that you have learned something new and uh, I will hope that we will meet in some another video. Till then, have a good day, stay safe and bye bye.